How's it going, Giants fans? Coming off a huge, monstrous playoff implication victory over the Washington Commanders. Anthony was saying just before we started recording, that was one of the best Giants games we have seen in quite some time. With the season on the line, the playoffs on the line, the Giants showed up and made some big plays and a huge, monstrous, ginormous shout out to our rookie, Kayvon Thibodeau. Bow down to the master. That guy had... An unbelievable game. One of the best individual pass rush performances I think that we've seen. It's got to be a decade. It's got to be years, years, years since we've seen an individual play at that level for that. I mean, the guy was gassed by the third quarter and the guy just kept running. He made huge moment after huge play after huge play. His his finishing stats, we'll talk about that in a second. The impact he had on this game, the, the big massive goal line stop he had at the end to give the Giants defense a chance. He was everywhere, and and we're going to talk about a couple of individual players. We're going to focus on the positives uh, from this from this just ridiculous game and this win, and you know everything that's kind of a, a accumulated in this season, amounting to this victory. After getting our asses whooped last week to bounce back against Washington, are they as good as Philadelphia? No. Did they beat Philadelphia? Yes. So you know you look at any any week, anybody can win any game. The Giants showed up this week. A couple of individual players really stood out and had phenomenal games, and I'm excited to discuss those guys. Anthony, how are you feeling after the dub? I'm feeling incredible. What a win by the New York Giants. We're finally this close to making the playoffs. The odds, according to ESPN Analytics, have jumped to 90%. 90% chance of the Giants making the playoffs. That would be their first playoff berth since 2016. This was the most exhilarating Giants game that I have watched in a long time because this is the first playoff game or pseudo playoff game that the Giants have played in half a decade. It's unreal. Real, I'm so excited right now. What a performance. I think this is the first legendary performance in the beginning of a long and legendary career out of Kayvon Thibodeau. Saquon Barkley carrying the team on his back during the final stretch of the game. Daniel Jones played a great game, and Brian Dable brought the aggression. So did Wink Martindale, and that coaching staff really helped these players win this game earned this hard-fought late-game victory. The Giants played with a lead and somehow actually came away with the win. For a while there, I got really nervous. It was 20-12. to 12. I was scared that we were going to see another 20-20 20 to 20 overtime. I could not handle that. This game somehow ended in that 20-20 to 20 tie again. I mean, the world would have just shattered and, and just imploded upon itself, but thankfully that didn't happen. The New York Giants came away with a huge victory, and they're sitting pretty right there in the wild-card race, leading the wild-card race for the first time in a long time. And man, this feels good to watch the New York Giants win some important football games in the month of December. Yes, uh, being even in the mix, screw the draft. Every year we talk about the draft by this point in the season. Every year we end up drafting someone who doesn't do shit. Look at Kadarius Tony. Look at Eric. There's a Evan Ingram. How many first round draft picks have amounted to absolutely nothing? I don't give a shit about the draft. I care about winning football games and the culture that it breeds. And you're seeing that we have a, a secondary basically full of practice squad guys. If we can get into the playoffs and it looks like we just took a massive step forward, we are going to get a Dory Jackson back. We're going to get Xavier McKinney back. We got a, a defensive line that's healthy and getting healthier and getting better and getting some more momentum. This is a team that's getting a little bit better every single week in the health department. Is the offense going to be a top five offense, top 10 offense? No, we don't have that type of firepower, but our defense can keep us in games. You know, Thibodeau showed us that a performance like of that magnitude, he can keep us in games. All we need is a couple of big moments, and the Giants did that today. Kayvon Thibodeau specifically, guys, was out of his mind. He was playing like, like vintage Michael Strahan today. I've never seen a rookie have a game like this um, coming off such an ass-whooping that they received against the Eagles. He finished with 12 tackles, three tackles for a loss, a quarterback hit, a sack, a forced fumble, a touchdown, and a massive stop on the goal line that I said right before I tweeted out. I said, guys, watch, watch. If this cave, if cave on Thibodeau, that stop right there, the Giants could stop them right here. That's going to be because of that extra effort, that extra play that he made. And what do you know? End up missing it on fourth down. Was it a, a defensive pass interference? Maybe. I'm not going to think about that right now. We're going to think of the positives. But, you know, like just this entire game, cave on Thibodeau stepped up. The defensive line stepped up. Dexter Lawrence. He had a he had a forced fumble in his eighth sack of the season. You know this this team are the linebackers awful? Yes, we can't stop the run, but it's okay when you have Kayvon Thibodeau playing like the guy is coming out of a freaking alien movie and he's just an extraterrestrial. You don't you're not going to see performances like that very often. You need to take a second, take a beat to appreciate just how amazing and brilliant that was. That level of effort, 
that level of success, the pass rush win rate, everything he just showed us on the field is why we drafted him fifth overall. Not only is he a great football player, he's also a great character, and he has energy, and he brings that spunk, that spark to the defense. This is a guy who's going to be a stud on this defense for a very, very long time. And don't forget, you're pairing him with Aziz Ojolari, who also forced a fumble in this game, and he had a couple of big moments. And Dexter Lawrence is still under contract next year. Like I said, a sack, a forced fumble. He was excellent in this contest. This defensive line is young, hungry, and very cheap right now. This is where we have to extrapolate on that. The offensive line, one of the best pass-protecting games that we've seen all season long from this unit. Did they struggle? Did Evan Neal struggle to open the game? Absolutely. He got so much better as it went on, and the entire line really stepped up and played well today. Nick Gates, Feliciano Glowinski, Andrew Thomas, when you don't hear their names, it means they're playing well. That's what it comes down to with offensive linemen, Anthony. So when you're looking at Kayvon Thibodeau, you're looking at how the offensive line performed today, Tell me about it. Tell me your thoughts. We're going to dive into Daniel Jones after that because I want to give him some credit as well. Yeah, so this is the first clean sheet for the New York Giants offensive line all season long. This is the first game of the year that Daniel Jones has not been sacked in. They put up a zero, which is incredible. Huge progress from where we were at the beginning of the season and even just a few weeks ago when we were getting clobbered by the Washington defensive line and the Philly defensive line. So a really big performance out of Andrew Thomas and the rest of the guys on the Giants offensive line there. A couple mishaps here and there, but at, at the end of the day, they did a great job keeping Daniel Jones clean. It was a great game plan from Mike Kafka and Brian Dable. They really knew neutralized the Washington defensive line. And that was the headline going into this game. That was the story all week long. Could the Giants slow down the Washington commander's defensive line? They have a crazy front four that features a bunch of all pro and pro bowl talents. And somehow the New York Giants really inconsistent offensive line from the 2022 season went in there and shut down every single one of those Washington defensive linemen. Truly a special performance from all of those guys, Andrew Thomas and the rest of them. That was big. And then you just mentioned that Kayvon Thibodeau. Like I said at the beginning, I think this is the first legendary performance and a long and legendary career out of Thibodeau, the fifth overall pick out of Oregon. I'm super excited by what he showed on in tonight's game, the strip sack for the touchdown. I haven't seen a Giants defensive lineman make a play like that in an eon, okay? I haven't seen a performance like this out of a Giants defensive line since maybe Justin Tuck, Jason Pierre-Paul, or Osu Minura. It's been a long time since we've seen some real pass rushing capabilities out of a young edge rusher on the New York Giants defensive line. It's been a really long time and Dexter Lawrence with the season that he's having, write him into the All-Pro. And I also got to say, there's another player on the Giants roster that that is not getting enough talk uh, about being on the All-Pro teams, and that is Graham Gano. That dude is clutch. I know he missed that one kick in the last matchup with Washington that could have sent us uh, home with a win, but... He made this one, and he extended the lead, made it an eight-point game, won the game for the Giants basically there. He's been money all season long. That one kick is enough for me to forget about because he had the flu in that game. But every other game that he hasn't had the flu, he's been unstoppable. He doesn't miss kicks. He's just been a dominant kicker, and he really has played at an all-pro level the same way that, that Andrew Thomas and Dexter Lawrence have. Without him, the Giants would not be in the position that they are. So shout-out to Graham Gano for an, an truly crazy incredible performance all season long. And like you said, Kayvon Thibodeau really coming into his own. Aziz Ojolari was a little bit more quiet tonight than he has been in recent weeks, but that just goes to show when Aziz Ojolari isn't playing well, that's why you have Kayvon Thibodeau. When Kayvon Thibodeau might be a bit quiet, you got Aziz Ojolari. The Giants are building something on this defensive line here with Dexter Lawrence, with Leonard Williams back in the lineup today. A little slow, but he still made an impact. You best believe that he made an impact in the running game. And Kayvon Thibodeau and Aziz Ojolari. Now that's a front four that we can all get behind to get really excited about, especially considering we went into the season saying this is going to be a rebuilding year. The Giants probably don't have a chance of making the playoffs. Well, it's a rebuilding year. They have a great chance of making the playoffs, and they still have this excellent foundation to build upon for the foreseeable future. So this was a statement victory by the New York Giants. The players that you mentioned, Alex, just came to play, and that's what you need. You need your stars to show up in the biggest moments. And Kayvon Thibodeau says that, said that primetime loves him this week. Well, he proved that to be absolutely true, and I love Kayvon Thibodeau on primetime, and I can't wait for next week next week's matchup to hopefully see Thibodeau turn in another excellent performance. I just want to keep seeing just compound this. I know he got poked in the eye at the end, so hopefully he's good there. We'll give you guys an update tomorrow when we hear more about that. Um, but let's talk about Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones had himself a really solid game, 21 for 32 in the through the air, 160 yards. 
um, and, and tallied it up with 35 rushing yards as well. He had a clean football game. Was he throwing touchdowns left and right? No, he was not, but that's okay. The Giants really played a defensive conservative game plan, tried to maintain possession, uh, limit the turnover. Saquon Barkley had 87 yards, really picked it up uh, late in the game, was running well. But I'll tell you what, I, I – exactly what they needed from Daniel Jones, right? He had a couple of phenomenal drives, that 97-yard touchdown drive. Saquon Barkley punches it in. That was, and I'll go out of limb and say this, I said on Twitter, I think that was one of the best drives I've seen Daniel Jones kind of curate in his career up to this point. He was effective. He was clutch. He made a huge throw on fourth and nine. He did it with pretty much no playmakers. He used his legs. He was extremely efficient. He didn't make any bad throws. It was all clean football, big moment football, and he rose to the occasion. That is what is convincing people that he can be the future of this team. Um, were there plays that he left on the table that I wish he would have maybe been a little bit more careful with? The throw to Saquon at the end, the fumble that he almost, that was almost a fumble. Luckily, he was down. There are some things he's got to clean up, but otherwise, I was very happy with his performance. Um, he, he played a clean football game. If you get him some weapons, better pass protection, maybe we see him really blossom and take that next step forward. The question is, do the coaching staff feel that same way? That's something that's up to them. That's their decision. I will support whatever Brian Dable decides because right now, guys, and let's be quite honest, none of us are in a position to evaluate Daniel Jones. Brian Dable is the only one, the only opinion that actually matters. Whatever he decides is exactly what I'm going to agree with. That's exactly what my opinion is. If he says Daniel Jones is our guy, I fully support that because he's the one that turned Josh Allen into a superstar. He's the one that's making that made the Giants and a rebuild year with a practice squad team a, a, a playoff contender. You know that this is this is a, a coach that is elevating everybody. He knows what he's doing. If he trusts Daniel Jones, I trust him too. That's my opinion right now. I feel as though that's pretty fair. Um, to go along with what our coaching staff prefers. But looking at Daniel Jones, I was very happy with his performance. He had a couple of really big plays, clutch moments, did what he had to do, didn't have any crazy plays that were turnovers in the red zone or whatnot. I was I was fine with his performance. Anthony, what are you thinking about DJ after this game? Listen, Daniel Jones is not a stat sheet stuffer. Like he's not going to go out there and throw five touchdowns on any given Sunday. It just isn't going to happen, but it doesn't need to happen. He's winning football games, playing clean, conservative, smart football. He's making some big balls throws too. It's not like he's out there just running the ball or handing it off to Saquon the whole game. He threw some excellent passes today that without Daniel Jones making those throws, the Giants don't come out on top. There's a fourth down pass that he threw to Richie James for the first. There was a third down pass that he threw to Isaiah Hodgins that got them in the scoring position. He was clinical today. I mean, he threw into some tight windows. He threw with pressure in his face. He played an excellent football game. He also added quite a bit on the ground as well. There was a third down rushing attempt that just blew me away where Daniel Jones put his shoulder down and ran over. I believe it was Bobby McCain. He looked like prime Walter Payton for two seconds. I'd never seen anything like it, but he picks up the first down in the dying embers of the game in the fourth quarter clutch play from Daniel Jones. And honestly, we've seen that a lot this year. We've seen a lot of clutch plays from Daniel Jones down the stretch game winning drives. He's been great. And, and I know he's not putting up the stats that everyone wants him to put up. And it's not necessarily what you expect when you say that a player that a quarterback is playing good football when they're, you know, barely throwing for 200 yards in a game, but he's winning and he's doing it the right way. He's keeping the ball clean. No fumbles today, no interceptions. He really never put the ball in harm's way, maybe once or twice, but not bad enough to get picked off. So it's just a really great game plan from the Giants offensive coaching staff to keep him clean in terms of the offensive line. The pass protection was great, but a lot of that was schemed up. There was a lot of play action in this game, some rollouts as well, and a lot of RPOs. So that really mitigated a lot of the pressure from Washington's defensive line. So that was a great job by the coaching staff to keep Daniel Jones comfortable because he very much is a rhythm quarterback nine straight completions at one point in the game he was in a rhythm the Giants were driving and he got them in the scoring position and they scored a touchdown because of him so the Giants don't win that game if they have Daniel Jones on an off night but he was he was locked in tonight and he played a good game and he's done that quite a bit this season so this was a statement performance from him I know it wasn't a stat sheet stuffer like I said but it's still a statement win for him because he went out there and a lot of quarterbacks would crumble under this pressure and fold in a game like this because this was a must-win game the Giants lose this game the odds of them making the playoffs are terrible they'd have to fight really from deep within an abyss to climb out and find their way into the postseason but he went out there he did not throw three interceptions and blow this game he threw zero interceptions zero fumbles he kept the ball clean and he made sure that the Giants were in position to win this game it was conservative but it was still winning football he played some winning football and the Giants went out there and now they have a really solid chance of making the playoffs so 
I don't need the flashy Patrick Mahomes no look passes out of Daniel Jones. I need this version of Daniel Jones that goes out there, keeps the ball clean, and wins the game. And if if he can continue to do that while the defense continues to play at this level, I'd say Quan Barkley continues to carry the ball well. The Giants can keep winning games, and they might be able to sneak their way into the postseason and make some noise. You never know. We've seen crazier things. We've seen it. 2007 to 8, 2011 to 12. I don't want to get too carried away, but the Giants are in a position to once again be the underdogs that make a lot of noise and they've done it all year long. They've been the underdogs in nearly every single game this season, and they've won a lot of them. So hats off to Daniel Jones. I thought it was another great performance, and I'm really impressed with the way that he's played all season long. Absolutely. So, guys, I'd love to hear your opinions below. There's a lot to discuss. We'll go through it this week. I want to definitely take a look at Kayvon Thibodeau's pass rush film from this week and just kind of enjoy it, right? Just go through it with you guys. Enjoy the master class performance he just put on the field. Um, we'll talk about some other things and, you know, some injury reports and whatnot. I'm actually watching a video on Twitter right now. It looks like Kayvon Thibodeau's eye seems to be totally fine. He's actually very, very excited after the game. So I think that we're going to be just fine on the injury front with him. And um, we're good. This is, this is a very good feeling. Enjoy this. Sleep well tonight. Enjoy Victory Monday. Um, it's already Monday while we're talking right now. So just just feel good. The Giants are one step closer to the playoffs, baby. We haven't seen Giants playoffs since 2016. I love this team. Love you guys. Hopefully we can continue this success in compounding it. Always happy to hear your perspectives below. Make sure to like and subscribe as always. And we'll catch you guys on the next Fireside Giants episode. Mm-hmm.